Welcome to a brief introduction to OpenDSSG. In this video, we will present the basis of OpenDSSG and the graphical environment around it. If you have used OpenDSSG in the past, you'll note that things have changed a bit in this version. We brought back the menu bar, which was introduced in version 1 and then removed in version 2. However, we noticed that removing the menu bar added an additional complexity for the user. So we brought it back. The first part to visit in this menu is probably the help. To this menu, the user can have access to the user's manual. It can have access to the references about the software, which gives you an introduction to the history of OpenDSS and some contact information. The user can have access to the OpenDSS help, which is very useful for and describes the properties and options within OpenDSS. And finally, the error handler, which is a very helpful tool for reporting bugs since it allows the user to filter errors by date and time to then export them into a file that can be sent to us for debugging. The menu bar contains the same commands as the tools palette for handling projects and objects within a model. Both tools, the menu bar and tools palette, will guide the user to facilitate the accessibility to the tools and functionalities within OpenDSS and OpenDSSG. Let's start by opening one of the test cases provided with the software. The test cases are the same as the ones provided with OpenDSS. These are located at the OpenDSSG installation folder. There, you'll find a folder called Test Systems containing the models. It is recommended to copy those models to a different location before start playing with them, since many times OpenDSS needs to write new content in the models folder, an action that may carry issues if performed within the program files folder. To start interacting with the model, the user can use the menu bar or drag the mouse cursor on top of the tools palette icons, which will reveal the name of the tool or section through a tip string. OpenDSSG provides options for adding and editing elements to the model as well as to navigate across the model. All the elements in DSSG can be added by using graphical interfaces, which include controls for most of the properties of the element. A difference to its predecessor, in version 3, the user can select the connection bus for PC elements and PD elements from a list showing the bus location and facilitating the element's connection when dealing with medium and large scale models. Also, everything is interconnected, so the user can link the element model with other elements using a click, for example, linking load profiles, spectrums to a load, storage, PV. It's an easy task in this environment. OpenDSSG includes three-dimensional graphs for multiple purposes. This can be manipulated as desired, taking advantage of the three-dimensional space. For example, for zooming into the 3D graph, hold the Shift key and click with the mouse on the graph at the same time. Then move the mouse up and down for zooming in and out as needed. For relocating the graph in the space, press the Ctrl key and then drag and drop the graph as needed within the mouse, with the mouse. For those properties without a control, we have the additional OpenDSS definitions table which help to complement the model. The same features apply to all the forms and graphics within OpenDSS. G. The user can also drag and drop the model by clicking on the gray board. OpenDSS G includes two operational modes, the constructor and the simulation mode. In constructor mode, the user can edit the model and everything within. For simulating the model, the user needs to enable the simulator mode. To enable it, use the menu bar, the pop-up menu that shows up when right-clicking on the gray board or the button located at the bottom right of the tools palette. All the options have the same effect. The user will also find zooming options that allows to get a closer look to the model and see element and line names on the grid.
The search tool allows the user to find elements across the model. The elements are classified by type, filtering the list of elements at the elements name list. Another navigating option is the inspector window. This option lists the elements within a region of interest. The elements can be localized using the options provided by the inspector window and even edited, facilitating the access to the elements properties if needed. There are multiple tools for highlighting elements within the model, such as the substation, loads, storage, capacitors, and controllers, among others. Just open the heat maps menu and select the element to be shown from the panel specifying the color for each element. Then, the elements will show up on the screen. With this menu, the user can also select what will be shown, when, and how. There are options for focusing on PD elements and PC elements as needed. After enabling the simulator mode, all the circuit breaking elements such as the closers, switches, fuses and others will be colored indicating that they can be operated. Just click on the switch and it will open or close depending on its previous state. Also, the monitors within the model will show up. This can be hidden or redistributed along the screen as needed. Now the user can run the simulation. By default, the simulation mode is snap. After running the simulation, use the multiple heat maps to have an initial idea of the model's behavior. There are also multiple tools and reports to illustrate the model simulation results. Using the configuration menu, the user can change the simulation mode and other parameters, and then run the simulation again to see what happens. The simulation will update all the elements around OpenDSSG such as monitors. You will note that the data has been refreshed immediately. Operate elements around and see what happens. After running the simulation, update the heat maps and check with the monitors what happened with the system during the simulation time. There are several alternatives for making measurements, like the quick measurement, a tool that allows users to define a region of interest and bring the voltages, currents, losses and powers for the elements within that region. This is an interesting alternative for getting instantaneous data about the simulation in zones where there was no monitor installed.